What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today we're going to be uh, taking a look at a really cool little knife from Columbia River Knife and Tool or CRKT as most people know it uh, called the Pilar or Pilar or I don't know uh, how you want to pronounce it. I'm going to say Pilar. Um, <clears throat> so this knife, uh, you know, a lot of people kind of describe it as taking the knife world by storm. Um, sorry, so there's some noise in the background. It's cloudy here today. I'm, I'm in Kansas. We're about to um, uh, get uh, some weather. So I'm using some indoor and outdoor lighting. I've got my door open here, so there might be some noise from the outside. But anyways, um, everybody says this knife is taking the knife world by storm right now. I don't know if it's quite that dramatic, but it certainly is popular and it certainly does have some spotlight on it. Um, I, I think it's a really interesting knife, and, and I've got a few things I want to say about it, um, but I think first what we should do is measure it so that everybody has a good idea of the size of this, because I was definitely thrown off. The overall size officially is, let me get this to focus, the overall size officially is 5.9 ounces, and I think they're right. It looks to be just shy of 6 inches with a um, blade length. Uh, I want to say it's about two and a half and a cutting edge of like two and an eighth or two and a quarter. Yeah, about two and a quarter. Um, so this is a little knife. And uh, uh, now despite it being little, it is a little on the heavy side at 4.2 ounces. Now, we're going to talk about that and my thoughts on that. Um, but first, I want to do some size comparisons with some other knives just to get you a, a little bit better perspective of overall size. Um, here it is against the Ontario Rat Model 1. You can see there, uh, not a big knife at all. Let's put it up against the uh, Spyderco Manix 2. Spyderco Manix 2 coming in at 8 inches. Again, not a super big knife. Uh, what else do I have out here? Oh, uh, let's do a little preview. How about the um, the uh, Chavez um, Ultramar? A little bit of a preview there. Maybe that'll be coming to the channel next week. Uh, now let's do it uh, against a knife that is actually closer in size. Believe it or not, um, the uh, we've got the um, oh my gosh the um, Victorinox Cadet here uh, that's actually almost exactly the same overall size. I find that interesting. Um, so if, if you're wondering, you know, total length, it throws it off because it's so tall, you know, the blade's tall. Blade thickness comes in a very stout 0.15. So think, those of you who have uh, ZT uh, knives, uh, specifically the 0562, I think is almost exactly 0.15, maybe 0.155. Uh, that's the thickness that you're looking at there uh, on the um, on the blade. So if we can get that to focus, which it probably isn't going to work with us with the lighting. There, there we go. So you can see there the thickness of the blade. It's very thick. Now, um, so this knife, uh, right, this is important. I want to say this. So when I bought this for the for the contest, which by the way, this was paid for by. Uh, three generous donators along with the other two knives. So thank you again to those people who donated and made this possible. I'm really just the vessel, the guy talking, but this was paid for by generous viewers. So thank you again. Um, this, uh, the body or the construction of this is stainless steel, which, um, you know, makes it so, uh, which is what is making it so heavy because the inside of these liners are not milled out at all. Um, if we can get that focused on there, you can see inside there. No internal milling. Um, and the blade is made out of 8CR13 MOV. Now, I paid $24 for this knife. And I think that's, you know, that's a fair price. Now, when I just went and looked, because I did, this was one of the knives where I did actually need to go look up the weight because I was like, wow, that is heavy. Uh, blade HQ had them priced at $31.95. Now, I don't know if when I bought it, it was on sale. Um or not, but even with a small increase of $7, I'm kind of like, whoa, hey, pump the brakes. Um, I'm not 100% not convinced that we're getting up into the $30 mark on this knife. Um, I, I, I don't know what to think about that, but I want to make everybody aware this, this knife apparently costs $32 now. Uh, the steel on it is 8CR13 MOV, which is not necessarily a bad steel, but when you're getting into the $30 mark, you are approaching knives like the Rat, um, 
in D2 and and uh, it's just it's like it, you know do you really want to throw you know throw that in the mix there I don't know you know it's going to be up to you um, but this this one's moving up so just to be aware of that um, you do have a uh, primary opening mechanism being this sort of thumb hole thing um, I did uh, I have to I had to practice with this for a little bit but you absolutely can reverse flick it so that's pretty cool and I think you probably yeah, you can fire it out like that too. Um, though I, it, this is one of those knives where you're gonna mess around, you know, with it trying to open it like that. So really, the best method I, sorry, I had to make a cut there. The best method is probably the cat's paw, uh, like this. I mean, that just makes the most sense. It is, it is definitely easy to manipulate with one hand, uh, but that's just that's the easiest way to open it, in my opinion. So that's pretty cool. Uh, aesthetically, I think. Aesthetically, this is why this knife is doing so well because this right now is it's pleasing. You have this sort of um, uh, hawk build sheep's foot style blade with some belly, and it's a short blade. You know, people are really enjoying uh, small uh, EDC knives right now, and you have this nice um, bead blasted finish frame lock. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of thick, it's on the robust side, but it's still small and looks compact. Plus, you have this very, very small overall body, yet that forward toil actually allows even somebody with medium or, or medium large size hands to get their whole hand around it, which is really, really cool. This is a very comfortable knife to hold. Um, and, you know, I'd, obviously I don't like, um, for me, I'm not a tip down guy, but you can switch the pocket clip so that it's tip up, which is nice. But it is unfortunately only right hand carry. So sorry, lefties. Um, there is a nice little lanyard hole there um, for people who want to put a lanyard on. And there's a backspacer back here, which looks to be, yeah, it's made out of metal. It is uh, finished a little bit differently. So there's some contrast there uh, with the blade. But, you know, really overall, uh, this is a really, really nice looking uh, blade. And, you know, the finish on the blade is, is also nice. Um, this is going to come with a few marks here and there. This this one, you know, it was it was nice, but there were a couple just little tiny aesthetic things. There was a little scratch back here on the backspacer. Uh, the blade has a, a couple of little teeny tiny marks on it. The winner of this knife, I think, will still be extremely happy. There were no flaws in the edge or anything like that. The, the blade feels really good. Um, but just... Just little tiny aesthetic things. Um, it did come uh, centered, you know, it kind of, the camera's actually making it look like it's a little bit off, but it's pretty darn close to centered, maybe favoring this side just a little bit, but it's not rubbing, and your lockup is sitting. Uh, the camera's going to make it look like about 50%, though truthfully, I think on the tang of the blade, it's something like 40%. But it does lock up solid, no blade play up, down, left, or right, so I'm very happy with that. Um, I would also like to point out uh, the cutting ability of this knife because a lot of people were complaining that it was thick behind the edge, and it is thick behind the edge. Uh, but I'd like to demonstrate, um, you know, what what it's like to cut with this thing. So I'll grab a piece of paper and be right back. Okay, I'm back with my paper, and I want to demonstrate exactly how this knife cuts uh, right out of the box. So you can see there, pass number one, we're fine. Pass number two, we're fine. Can we get some waves? Yeah, we can. So guys, uh, the knife still cuts, okay? A lot of times I see, you know, people are like, oh, this knife is so thick behind the edge and it can't even cut. It can. I'm not I'm not always convinced that everybody that I'm watching, and I'm not, I'm not saying that, like, I'm better than anybody, but I'm, on, I'm not always convinced uh, that people that I'm watching cut things with a knife quite understand how to draw the belly of a blade through material. So, um, you know, let's be clear about this. This knife does come plenty sharp and is able to slice paper very efficiently. I did not do anything to that edge. Um, it is definitely thick behind the edge. There's more resistance than, you know, a, a Spyderco PM2 or Manix, you know, something like that. It is not the sliciest thing in the world, but it absolutely will cut out of box. There's nothing wrong with the edge. Um, it's just, it's just thick, you know, it's a chubby guy. Um, I, uh, I, you know, overall really, I love this concept. Um, but I, you know, I'm with everybody else. I'd like to see, um, an upgrade in materials. Um, specifically, you know, I'd like to see this in D2 and I would not like to see the price go up a whole lot. You know, 
A D2 version of this, but you know, in the $35 to $40 mark would have been a lot better. I will say there's one other upgrade that I would really like them to make, and that would be the washers. Um, now, there, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people are like, well, now wait a minute, you're a Hinderer fan and you were defending Gen 4 and those run on uh, Teflon washers, which is what this is running on. Yeah, you know, I, I am a huge Hinderer fan and uh, uh, I don't have a problem specifically with Teflon washers. And I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world on this knife, but if I had a choice, I would absolutely 100% prefer phosphor bronze or bearings, um, you know, in some situations. And uh, even on the Gen 4s, you know, it didn't bother me because I knew there was a lot uh, more knife there on the Hinderer um, that was making up for that cost or equating to that total cost and that PB washers would only have added 6 to $8 to the overall value of the knife. So that's kind of in a different ballpark. On this knife though, come on, uh, let's, let's get some uh, phosphor bronze washers on there. Really, the, the Teflon doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, plus, you're going to get better response from the community and the people who are, or most people are going to go out and actually use this. And I, I think you're going to get a more positive response from people who are using it um, if there are uh, phosphor bronze washers in it. And in any case, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where people are more satisfied just to know that it's in there, uh, you know, on this knife. Especially if you're going to, if I did not buy this knife on sale, you know, and, and they did just bump the price, which I don't know 100% that they did, but if they did just move up officially to $32, Come on now, let's. <laughs> if you're gonna charge us more, let's get some uh, phosphor bronze washers in there. It's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. I don't, I'm not setting out to make anybody upset. Uh, that's just what I think. Um, but really, though, that's it. You know, a lot of people are upset about the weight and the heft. Uh, 4.2 ounces. Now let's remember, guys. 4.2 ounces is only 4.2 ounces. That's not really a whole lot. Um, and I, for one, kind of enjoy a little bit of heft on a knife that looks like it might have a little bit of heft to it. You know, sometimes lightweight is is uh, nice, you know, like on that um, that Riot Jack that I've got, uh, it, it weighs seven ounces. But if there weren't, you know, materials like titanium and carbon fiber making it light uh, and the entire thing were made out of steel like this, it would be an unbelievably over cumbersome heavy knife and it would not be fun to carry. It would not be uh, great at all. Um, now, you know, oftentimes a, a knife that is uh, already only weighing three ounces and, and they, and you know, let's say it's a, it's an eight inch knife and it weighs three, three and a half ounces. And then uh, the, this company make, takes all these measures to lighten it up like crazy. And they release a version of it that weighs 1.9 ounces or 2.4 ounces. Okay, that's fine. But at that point with that knife, now I'm just feeling like it's flimsy. So, you know, weight, overall weight is not always this, um, this like uh, uh, definite factor that's like, if it's lighter, it's better. If it's heavier, it's worse. That is not always the case. It really depends on the knife. Um, I think that the, the weight should be fitting to, uh, to, to what you expect with the knife while taking into consideration how easy it is to carry overall. So, you know, profile is, of course, really important. Ergonomics, you know, the footprint in your pocket. And this guy is not going to be taking up a whole lot of room in your pocket. In terms of overall thickness, you are looking almost exactly as thick as the uh, Spyderco Manix 2. So if you can carry this guy, you're not going to have a problem with this guy. Uh, the Manix 2 also weighs, that one weighs... 5.2 ounces, a lot of regular G10 Manix 2s with milling weigh 4.2 ounces, and then the lightweight ones weigh, I don't know, what do they weigh, 3 ounces, something like that. So we're still in the same ballpark. Yeah, it's lighter, you know, if we're talking about length of blade to weight ratio, uh, you know, if you want to get that specific, maybe you'll be bummed out by this. Personally, I kind of like the heft on it. It just sort of matches the little tanky, you know, aggressive look to it, and I think it's neat. Uh, I'm not interested in the version that's half G10 or half carbon fiber. Um, if they uh, kept a liner underneath on this side and added a G10 scale to it and made it D2, yeah, I'd check that one out. Um, but uh, on this on this uh, this caliber of knife, uh, I'm not interested in in uh, one solid G10 scale and then a, a steel uh, um, a piece on the other side. I'm just, I'm just not. I can't quite explain why, I'm just not. This whole video sounds really preachy, like I'm being very judgmental towards this knife, and I just wanna let everybody know 
um, that my opinions are just my opinions and that my, my word is not law. I don't take myself that seriously. I'm just kind of uh, just kind of saying what I think about this. But truthfully, I really like this knife. I like it. Um, all things considered, this is a great little EDC beater. Definitely. But this is a knife that you can throw in your pocket and, and whip out and use. It's not really going to scare anybody. You know, it doesn't have a, a flipper on it or any way to... Uh, you have to go out of your way to fire this thing in a way that sounds aggressive and loud. Um, so it's for the most part, it's going to be a slow, manually opening knife um, that's got a very, you know, like to a knife guy, this is cool and looks aggressive. But to a regular uh, person, this looks like a very uh, docile blade. And it's small and it's all, you know, monochromatic. And it's just, it looks like a tiny box cutter you know that's what it looks like and that's what it's going to be really good at uh is just opening packages and boxes and things like that you know you've got a pretty thick robust tip down here so you might you're going to have a little bit of trouble you know puncturing things but it's that's really not that big of a deal you know if if you're the type of person who just needs a small inexpensive edc knife and you're going to be doing some you know medium light medium cutting tasks. I know I say that a lot on this channel, but if you're just going to be opening packages and boxes and bags of pretzels, then then yeah, this is a great knife, you know. I wouldn't go out and try and chop down uh, trees with it or eat. I wouldn't do a whole, you know, a crazy amount of wood processing or anything like that. Um but uh, you you certainly do could do some some light wood carving. Um let's talk about the uh the uh, stop pin back here if I can get her to focus. Come on now. Focus. There we go. Uh, it's got a nice robust stop pin back there and it is actually shouldered. So the uh, contact there as far as wear goes over time is going to be great. It's going to wear very slowly. Let's remember that the face of this lock is steel. Uh, so the steel on steel interaction here is going to create for a or should create for a very slow wear. Uh, there is a nice medium strength detent. Um, it's just enough to where if you want to fire it out like that, you can, but it definitely is going to stay in place. There's nothing that's going to whip this out, and that's really just the stubbiness of the knife. The pocket clip is incredibly boring, but functional. That's truthfully really all I have to say about that. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. There's a little bit of billboarding for uh, CRKT, but that's fine. It's de The way that they mill that pocket in there is definitely going to hold it in place, and I have no issue with that. As far as all the hardware, you have a nice torque size up top, a nice polished show side of the pivot, two screws on each side that hold both scales together uh, and the um, backspacer. So very, very simple construction, no issues there. Um, let's move on, I think, to the final conclusion. So in conclusion, I think uh, the $25 that I paid for this knife was very fair. I really like this knife overall. I think that honestly, um, people are griping about this version of it and the you know the the attempts that CRKT made to evolve it and make it a little better. I think people are griping about it a little too much. I think this is a really cool knife. I don't think they need to be hiking the prices on this like crazy. And if they're going to do that, there's some little teeny tiny things that would just make people happier but aren't an absolutely necessary thing. Um, if you decide, if let's say you don't win this, um, which by the way, you know, I mean, if, if you win this, you can see for yourself and you can have it for free and you can just enjoy it for what it is. But if you don't win this and you're still interested in it and you want to go buy one for yourself, um, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Even if, you know, you do go ahead and pay the $32. Um, this is a cool knife. And the heft to me just sort of adds that indescribable feeling of, uh, yeah, you know, maybe maybe I'm I'm getting a little more of what I paid for here. HCR 13 MOV is not necessarily a bad steel. Um, you know, it's it's nothing new. It's not going to be you know an ultra performer, but it is stainless and uh, it's going to hold a, a reasonable edge for a little bit. And then you know you just you're going to be responsible for touching it up and maintaining it. Um, more often than you would a nice powder metallurgy steel. So this is a cool knife. I like this. And uh, I, I would have no reservations against taking it out and using it. So I think that's really cool. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, but I think that's pretty much going to be it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. And if you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there is definitely, definitely more coming. 
Um, I hinted at it a little bit uh, in the comments to somebody. Um, I've got something amazing coming on Monday. I've got, um, of course, uh, the Ultramar, or Ultramar uh, which was um, actually donated for review or lent to me uh, for review by a really, really generous viewer. Thank you again to the person who lent me uh, the Ultramar. That's really cool. So I'm excited to talk about that one. I'm excited to talk about what's coming in on Monday. And then I've got two more unbelievably cool knives that are coming in um, maybe in a couple weeks from now and then a whole bunch of stuff in between. So um so definitely stay tuned to that. If you're not subscribed to this channel, subscribe if you want to be a uh, subscribe if you want to be a part of it, and uh, definitely if you want to uh, be around for uh, instructions on how to win this knife, uh, or if you want to be around for uh, me announcing the winner of this Civivi Backlash. Um, so, anyways, thank you to everybody who watched, and have a great day.